Hi everybody! Welcome to the adventurous world of Eagle's Quest Adventures. And your host today is me, Olga. <laughs> Louis's not here, he's working, so I'm going to do this video marking the first anniversary of our Jayco Seneca. 2019 Jayco Seneca 37 RB. A year ago, the end of this month, we picked up this gorgeous behemoth, <laughs> not knowing the types of adventures that we would have, but hoping that we would have them. So here we are. So I'm going to do an anniversary tour and I'm going to show you all the things um, that I'm able to show you in the RV and some of the things that we've done to enhance our comfort in the RV. Some things that, um, that could have been improved on, we improved on them. So we're gonna start at the cab. Let's go forward. And we're gonna talk about what we've done up there. So the first thing that you notice when you look in the cab is the center console. Well, the Senecas don't come with the center console. And the first thing that we noticed when we came into the Seneca, when we looked at it, was it only had two cup holders. But the problem with that is that we like to have a bottle of water or a cup of water whenever we travel right in the front, along with whenever we want a cup of coffee but there's only two cup holders so uh, we searched online and we found a gentleman that fabricates center consoles for the M2 um, the S2 RV chassis being new on the market they had not um, come up with any specifically for the S2 RV but the gentleman let us know that the M2 chassis is like the S2 RV as far as the cab area is concerned. So he made us the center console and the center console comes with storage cubbies where we can put um, charging cords, where we can put the insurance uh, paperwork for the RV as well as registration. And um, we have the tire minder sitting on there. We have the remote for the radio sitting there. Now the center console also comes with an extra um, USB port charger as well as a cigarette charger. And it works really well. We're really happy with it. Um, the other improvement that we made up here is if you notice the dash cover, um, when I went online to search for the dash cover, it um, they were very expensive. Um, they were over, um, I believe, $200 for them to special make it. So what I did is I created a template and then I cut out um, using that template. Uh, this is outdoor indoor carpeting. It comes in a six by eight roll and it was only like 20 bucks. So there you have it. It works great. It doesn't move around. I don't have any Velcro on there because I don't, I don't want to put that sticky stuff on the dash and it works good. We also got a steering wheel cover so it's, it's easier to grip and um, it, it's, it doesn't make your hands fall asleep when you're gripping it too hard because it has those little like massaging um, I guess little nipples on there so it, it works great um, we also got um, some mats and those were specifically made for the M2 again because the cab is just like the S2 RV and um, those work great anytime you spill anything or you have mud on your shoes or water on your shoes it doesn't get all over the place it just stays there and you clean it up and you're done um, now right here we have some seat covers but it only goes on the back 
and what this is is just an extra extra large t-shirt and we got it in just plain white and let me see if I could swing out here and show you the front if I fall it's um let's see it's a picture of an eagle it's really pretty I liked it so when you get it dirty you just take it off and um, put it in the washing machine and all is good with the world um, of course you know I took the sleeves off and I sewed it and of course I sewed the the part where your stick sticks your excuse me your head sticks out of okay another um, improvement that we did up here in the cab is um, I went ahead and the same type of carpeting indoor outdoor carpeting um, I created a template for this area I cut it out and I put it in there because it was it's just a rubber mat and um, this is a lot more cozier and it looks good um, I finished off the edges with Gorilla Tape and it, it just looks good it really looks good and it matches um, we also got this uh, little trash bin right here and um, I picked this up at Amazon this was like $15 and you can use um, plastic bags that you get from the grocery store and you know put it in there to line it and then when it's full you just throw it away um, another thing we did is you know all of you know that we travel with a kitty and when we're parked the litter box goes right here and since this is on a slope well all the litter kept going to the back of the litter box and uh, let me tell you um, our cat would complain to no end <laughs> and you know after hearing him complain and going in the the litter box and rearranging things <laughs> we figured it out what it was and since we we made this and this is level now and it, it's multi-purpose because we can use it for his litter box or we can use it just to put things on when we're traveling so it's like a little table in between the the seats and um, it works good makes this le this area level now and I, I know a lot of you notice my map and you're probably saying well why are you using a road map when you have a GPS well I like my GPS and I do use it but I use it in conjunction with my map because the GPS shows you just the the immediate points that you're going to unless you 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 click on it to show you the the bigger map and this one I could see where I'm going in the long run and I could see all the little towns and all the little roads so I, I love my paper map and I love my GPS so and I use those two in conjunction with each other and plus what if your GPS goes out what if you have no no phone service where you're at you're in a dead zone it's good to have both it's good to have both so let me get up and continue the the anniversary tour so if we look over here you see a, a small bookcase now I'm all about maximizing space in an RV and I love to bring books with me to read and I, I, I wanted to have a place where I can put DVDs in here. I also wanted a place where maybe we can just drop off our keys where it's not too noticeable right there by the door where maybe you know somebody sees hey I know you have keys let me grab the keys by the door hypothetically of course and um, I also wanted a place to put all the remotes and it's right in there all the remotes are there and other cubbies so you, you see I have uh, I have places to to expand I have an empty area where I can put other things on there so that was the method behind my madness to 
putting in this bookshelf. And I don't know if you notice, it kind of matches. Kind of. Anyway, that was a mixture of oak stain and weathered gray in case you want to add uh, a wood something in wood in the RV and you're wondering how you're going to come up with the color. Okay, so moving back. Um, the new Senecas are coming with uh, I call them center speakers and if you could see up there uh, we have a Yamaha sound bar. That's what they call them, a sound bar. And we picked that up at Costco. It was on sale. And occasionally they do bring those back in stock and they do have sales. And it works great with the TV. And not only that, but it's Bluetooth. So you can play your music that's on your phone. I, I really like the, the features and it sounds really good. Now, if all of you notice the TV, you know that a 39 inch television comes with the Jayco Seneca. Well, it's it's not 4K and we wanted a 4K TV. So, and, and we know that 39 inches are really hard to find. So, uh, we found a 40 inch 4K television and we had to make some adjustments to make it fit, but it fits great and it looks really good. And I love my fireplace. <laughs> I just love my fireplace and by the way, it does give out heat that heats up the whole area, the whole living area. So you don't even have to use your propane heater. You don't have to use the heat strip that's on your AC. It's great. I also have a little tray here for shoes um, because a lot of times when you come in with your shoes and you know they may be wet or they be come from the, of course, dirt from the outside, we didn't want to just put it on the bare floor and so we got this tray to minimize the mess of shoes coming in from the outside. Now this area right here concerned me because it's such a deep well, <laughs> stairwell, um, that I was concerned that one day I'm, I may take a misstep and just fall in there and hurt myself. So what we did was we created this cover and let me show you the back of the cover. Okay, let me put it here so we can see it a little bit better. It was a, a spare piece of wood that I had in my workshop and I put these little stoppers, I call them stoppers, because they keep this from rattling and moving in the stairwell. Now I also put this foam right here so it doesn't scratch and I put it right here as well so it stays in place okay so let me go ahead and put it on here so you can see what I'm talking about so those little stoppers are going to keep it in place and the little padding the foam is going to keep it from making noise when you're traveling and there it is it looks good now the piece on the edge right here that's aluminum aluminum strip that I bought at Home Depot and um, I cut it same size strips on either side and it works really good it works really good I also um, painted it I spray painted it black so it can match with the edge of the stairwell okay now I want to show you this ensemble right here now this was an option for my RV. It, um, you can either just uh, accept the sofa and the dinette without the back, this part right here, or you can select uh, theater seating or you can select this ensemble. And the reason I selected this ensemble because this resembled to me an L-shaped sofa. Looking at it, you could see why. Let me just lift this up so you could see. You see that? It looked like an L-shaped sofa. And I like the idea of an L-shaped sofa 
because it allows you to pretend, well not pretend, but this is like a chase area right here. So your back is up against that part right there and you extend your feet this way. Or you can put your back against this area right here where a regular sofa will not allow you to do that, nor will theater seating allow you to do that. And you can stretch out your legs this way. Or you can just sit conventionally, one person here and one person there. And you're always facing the TV. And that was important to me. Having that central um, living area sofa where it is straight ahead facing the TV. And that's what I liked. And of course the dinette has that backrest right there, right below the window that you can also uh, pretend as a chase lounge and just sit back and stretch out your legs as well as on this side. Now you notice I have a little like lamp on the table and I love it because it's like ambiance. <laughs> you turn it on when you're eating and it's just perfect. Um, you may notice underneath I have a, a rug and the reason for that is when you're sitting down you have your feet on there and you're constantly um, f causing friction on the rug and, and it wears out faster and also if you drop food it's easier to just to throw that in the washing machine and wash it than to clean up the rug area so that's the the reason for that madness um, also I have area rugs in central locations that will allow um, less friction on the floor, um, maybe cause the floor to uh, to get a little bit um, more um, wear and dirt. So I have these rugs in central locations, of course, in front of the stove and in front of the, um, the wash basin right here. Okay, so this model is a 37RB. And the reason I chose this model over all the other models, over all the other layouts, was the counter space. There was always something that the other layouts did not have. One layout, the sink was diagonal and it didn't have any under cabinet storage. Another layout did not have this pull out. And there was another layout that had the L-shaped, but it didn't have um, the bathroom size that I wanted. It, and and the, the living area was a lot smaller. This area was a lot smaller. So there was always something going on with each layout. This one best suited what we were looking for. It had all the upper cabinet uh, space storage as well as the under sink cabinet storage. Okay, now what we added on this one that it didn't come with was this receptacle. And you're probably wondering, how the heck did you do that? Well, I'll explain. And the reason we added that is because there's two under cabinet receptacles one on here, under here, and one under here. But all the appliances that we have, for some reason they have short, short cords. Oh, I, I leaned on the plug. So we can't plug it in. So we said, you know what? I don't understand why this one didn't come with an external receptacle on the side because I've had uh, previous to this we had a gas class C and it had a receptacle on the side so we looked and we looked and we found one and it was by accident uh, the uh, return heater ducting is in under here 
and we had uh, a heater duct that came loose so we had to access um, underneath the stove we had to go in there and in the process of getting that fixed I looked around and I saw a receptacle in the back here under here that was used to plug in the TV on the outside I go huh that's interesting so when we decided to put that receptacle on the side above the stairwell I knew that I could access an electrical source where the TV is plugged in so what we did was we we created a cord with a plug and of course the the loose end that we had to connect to this receptacle we connected and the one with the plug we plugged in and all is good with the world it works great all is good with the world so in the kitchen area what we've done is and this was by accident I bought this tray I thought it was gonna fit and it didn't fit but lo and behold it sits really nice on holds on to the edge right here and it allows storage underneath how about that and bonus bonus it closes <laughs> so, all is good with the world all is good um, we also added a a trash can that we could just pull out and there's even storage on the side on the bottom and we put our trash can bag right here that works really good and on top above the microwave there is storage but it needed a shelf so I went ahead and added a shelf it works fantastic adds a little bit more storage to to a space where otherwise you would have to stack everything so high and then it it's just a pain to to retrieve anything um, another thing that all of you noticed in one of my previous videos and if you haven't I'll go ahead and put a link on the des description so you can see it what I did back here now um, when they made this Seneca and in previous years but not too far back because I noticed that in older Senecas it does come with a complete wraparound backsplash but in this one it only came with a backsplash directly behind the stove and um, we all know that when we're cooking the splatter is not going to go to where the backsplash is it's going to go wherever it goes so I went ahead and um, took out the old backsplash and put in this one and this one has taken already um, over half a dozen trips nothing it's solid it is solid and I love it okay so another thing that we improved upon was we have these pull-out pantries that had a lot of wasted height okay you notice that these are different colors because those are the add-ons and that's what scrap wood that I had and so I created a small little nook up here for my spices and then this one came with it so this is fine it, it we can put things that are no taller than this in here even cans and the rest we just put cans and it works great and we did the same with the upper pantry leaving the bottom one for cereals and then the top for shorter items and it works great now I forgot to mention another thing about this ensemble and the reason I chose it was because it had the biggest storage drawer so huge and I wanted to utilize it for paper products 
See, look at that. I also put Orion's, um, like, his bowls in here and his food when he's traveling with us. As you can see, I have, like, small games in here that we utilize at the time that we're traveling. So, all is good. All is good. And there's also one on the other side, on the other booth, but it's a lot smaller. Um, smaller uh, width size, but length, it's the same length. It's pretty, it's goes pretty deep in there. Um, also, and I forgot to mention, back here, let's see if I can squeeze in here. We added this power strip. And the reason we added that power strip, because there's only one receptacle underneath the dinette. And um, it was, you know, there's only two plugs in there. And it was difficult sometimes to get under there, unplug something, plug another thing in there when we needed it. So this was a, a good solution for us, because not only do we have three plugs in there, we have two USB ports that we can just pl plug things in. As you can see, I'm charging some batteries right now. It's plugged into the USB. All is good. Now, another thing that we did was, and let me get down here so you can see, um, underneath the residential refrigerator, you'll find where the refrigerator is plugged in and the water lines. So you see this receptacle here? We added that one as well. But that does not utilize the interior power from the RV. That's an external power receptacle. In other words, we have another receptacle in the power bay in the basement and we plug in an extension in that receptacle and to an external power source, an external plug. And the reason for our madness on this is because we have had occasions where we had to take out the RV and park it in the front of the house and the refrigerator is always on. And if we have things in it, we're gonna keep it always on. After all, it's a residential refrigerator and don't you keep your residential refrigerator always plugged in yeah you do right so it, it nothing happens to it if it's constantly plugged in so what we do is we take out the extension that we have just specifically for that plug when we park the RV in the front of the house and I take this cover off right here and it has four of these little plugs and a screw right there so we unscrew it we take this cover off I unplug the refrigerator from the receptacle that's under there as a matter of fact it's right here I take the refrigerator plug and I bring it around here and I plug it in here and I have power just for the refrigerator because in the front of the house I do not have a 50 amp source in the side of the house I do but not in the front so that solves our problem. Not only that, but you can use it in campsites. Let's say you want to plug in uh, something that draws a lot of power, but you don't want it to, to have it plugged into the RV for whatever reason. Um, you can plug it in here. It's good. It's all good. And it, it has um, a surge protector on it as well. That We wanted that too. Okay, so let me get up. Okay, so this layout is one and a half baths. And in this bathroom, we didn't do too much of, a, of an upgrade. The only thing that we did to the bathroom is, is we added, of course, um, a little trash can and a rug. Each bathroom has its own rug. We, so we left this bathroom pretty much the way that we got it. It, it suits our purpose. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't show you this. Let me turn it on. We did do something in here. My mop. Let's <laughs> see. <laughs> and I don't know if you can see that. It has this up here to hold the mop. And since it bounces around when we're traveling, I kind of bungeed it to the toilet paper holder. It works good. Okay. So that's what this bathroom 
So let's go ahead and go into the bedroom area. And in here, we did a few things to make it comfortable. One of the first things that we did, we changed the mattress out. <laughs> When the RV industry tells you you've got a premium mattress, well, that's for another video. But we changed the mattress out and we went with Mattress Insider and they custom make mattresses to the size that you need. And they even did the radius corner that the original mattress was. And we also ordered it with a pad, a breathable pad, because um, if there's a lot of moisture under here, you can get mold and you can also get mold in the wood part underneath. Now also, and I keep forgetting to show everybody this, but you see this trim right here? I went ahead and I got that and I believe it's a quarter inch trim that you can buy at Amazon, I believe it's quarter inch. Don't don't quote me on it. Um, I'll I'll have to check my my records. And um, I kept scraping my leg when I would make the bed, and um, in the old mattress. And so I went ahead and I put this in there, and it works good. It works really good. Now about Mattress Insider, the company, um, because I'm a customer, the company went ahead and send me my own link to their website where I can share with others. So you can get a 5% discount. So if, if you go to their website, it's www.mattressinsider.com. Take a look at their products. Um, you'll see what they have for the RV industry, RV beds. And, um, if you use my link, you'll get 5% off, but you have to go through their website with my link. And I'll go ahead and post it at the bottom of the video under the description section. I'll post that link. So if you want to go ahead and use that link and get your 5% off, do it. Because um, I, I did it with, uh, I think it was, uh, I can't remember which, which YouTuber had... Um, 5% off as well. But anyways, use the link and you can get your 5% off. Now the nightstands next to the bed, they're very tall and they're deep. Didn't have a shelf. I went ahead and added a shelf. Both um, nightstands. Now in the, um, in the bedroom area, in the closets, I added A cordless vac and I put of course the the stand that comes with that has the the cord to to plug it in so you can uh, charge your cordless vac and we actually drilled a little hole down here and ran the cord to the other side and that's how we keep it charged right here. Now you're probably no noticing the Reflectix, um, it's not tape, but insulation back here. And a YouTuber put this in all the inside of his cabinets. And I understand why, because when you open up your cabinets, when you open up your closets, when you open up your drawers, you notice that there's a lot of heat coming out of them. This keeps that heat down so you don't get that vapor coming out when you open the, the cabinets or your drawers. And it helps a lot with the cooling and if it's cold outside with the heating in your RV. I also have carpeting in here and that's a preference of mine because this keeps everything from moving around if you have things on the bottom. Also helps with insulation. Now, in the back of the TV, and I don't know if you can see it, 
there's quite a bit of storage that you can utilize. Um, I want to put a shelf up there uh, so I can actually stack some stuff up there because as you could tell there's a lot more room and I am not fully utilizing it. So that's what I plan on doing. Okay, there's also storage underneath the bed quite a bit and I've got that packed full of full of stuff and I already uh, raised the bed so you could see the storage under here. Let me go ahead and shine a flashlight so you could see. Um, we have a lot of miscellaneous stuff, games and everything that we put under here. I also put a rug under there as well so it's, it doesn't move around in transit. Um, to be honest with you, I don't like this design. Um, the way they put these boards up it's two boards split in two and the weight of the bed um, is making this these boards bow uh, down so I'm gonna change that up I'm going to instead of side by side like this I'm going to do um, instead of vertical I'm going to do horizontal and that's what I'm going to do now under here is right here is a lot of um, you have the slide um, mechanism the slide module where you can reset this slide with instructions on it so this is really easy to bring out um, it's it's not a problem to make it easy uh, for you to be able to access what's underneath so um, that's the storage underneath so let me go ahead and uh, show you what the bathroom looks like. Oh, before I forget, um, you can get a better, see how it bows? Yeah, I don't like that, but I'll fix it. Um, this thing under the mattress, I just wanted to show you, it's that weave that allows the mattress to breathe. And um, it works really, really well. Um, a lot of people uh, who have who swear by it, me included, um, have seen the results of not having this breathable mesh. The mattress um, collects moisture and it creates mold buildup on the mattress and not only that but down here as well. So you want to make sure that your mattress breathes. Another thing I want to show you is the shelf that I put in the nightstand. Uh, the nightstand, like I said, is tall and deep, and there was a lot of wasted space, so I put in a shelf. There it is. And it works really good. As you can see, I don't have that mess, everything pile up on top of each other. Okay, so let's go in the bathroom and let's look at what's in here. Let me turn around, turn on the light. Boom, there it is. Okay, so what I did in here was I added some hooks and I put towels on those hooks. Uh, they're tall because we have big towels. <laughs> so, and that way they don't hang down all the way to the back to the commode. Okay, it works really good. I also went ahead and added um, like a, a wardrobe bar up on top. And that's so I can hang um, clothes that I don't want to dry in the dryer or you can just add um, you know more clothes on there whatever you want uh, you can dry bathing suits there's a lot of options to having this and it you can remove it this is open right here turn it and pull it out of the other end see works really good and by the way I have never ever screwed anything into the wall where the opposite side of that wall is the exterior skin. I have never ever screwed anything into that wall. It's always been glue, it's always been that 3M stuff that you can easily remove later on. Now I added that corner tray and I'll tell you what, it hangs on there. It has four huge suction cups and uh, it's very, very secure. It's taken many trips, not a problem. 
Now underneath the drain on the bottom where you can access it through the, the heater vent right there, I went ahead and I put two rigid styrofoam pieces to give a little bit more support to the drain. And those styrofoam pieces are on either side of the P-trap. And I do have a video on that. I'll go ahead and post it in the description down below so you can see it. Uh, the other thing that I added here is, of course, a rug, um, a trash receptacle. And this is for safety reasons, I added this handle. And it only has two screws in here. Why? Because there's a piece of wood right here and it's very, very secure. I'm pulling on it and it doesn't move. It's all good, it works great. Okay, now I ordered this unit. Let me turn around, I, I don't wanna make you busy, or dizzy, excuse me. <laughs> you could be busy and dizzy too. Um, with a washer dryer combo. Let me open that up. And this washer dryer combo works great. I encourage everybody to read your directions in the owner's manual that comes with it because it does a lot of things and you can pause it in the middle of a cycle and I've done it. So read your manual and so you can learn how to do it. Now when I looked in here I saw some wasted space and if you look above the washer dryer combo you notice that it has all this space and not only that but it had space all the way up in there oh there's a little, little cubby hole and I created that cubby hole it used to be this right here went all the way across and this was stapled so I just pushed it out right now it's velcroed in there <laughs> I velcroed it on there in case I need to access, um, get further enhanced access to the um, connections back there. I don't know if you could see the connections, it's right back there. So um, I did it that way again so I can have full access. Now this cubby hole goes all the way to the back and um, I don't have, like I said, anything screwed back there. There is an L plate that holds down the wash machine and makes it secure. And I did put a piece of wood on top of that plate and glued it to the bottom of this shelf to keep it from sagging or dropping off. Now this side, I did screw it in. It's glued and screwed. Why? because it's the other side is the closet and there's a thick piece of wood there and also under here this wood right here it is screwed onto this and that's what supports the bottom shelf and I've got an L-shaped little bracket right here that holds a side panel to keep things in place there so what do I store in here as you can see, towels, and in the back part is linens. It, it comes in very handy. Now, if you don't order the washer-dryer combo with this unit, you will get all this closet space. Um, but I wanted the washer-dryer combo. Okay. Just wanted to show you that. Now, down here at the bottom, I did put in two trays. To keep everything in place so um, it doesn't fall over and here I keep um, like soaps and chemicals to clean the, the bathroom and and all that good stuff all is good with the world now moving back into the um, the bedroom I want to show you something that I did in here um, and I don't know if Jayco fixed it but I can tell you um, when I saw the lack of height in the drawers I was a little disappointed <laughs> because it was wasted 
space and if you look inside the drawer you see right here this is how deep the drawers were originally and I've got I got some quarter inch plywood um, really good quality and I screwed it in to the edge of the existing drawer and I increased the height about two inches all the way around giving me extra height to put in more clothes and also um, not have the danger of the clothes falling over when I pull open the drawer so I, I really like that I'm always finding ways to to maximize storage in here um, another thing that I did was um, I don't know if Jayco is putting in baseboards um, in their units. I'm not sure if maybe they missed it on mine. <laughs> I don't know. But I went ahead and put um, a thin board, of, a baseboard on here. And it looks really good. I think. I think it looks good. See? There it is. Now you notice I have a lot of throw rugs around. Um, Anywhere that I see that there's going to be a lot of um, tr uh, tread wear, I guess, uh, wear, more wear because of, of people walking, more use, um, I put a throw rug in there. It's so easy to um, just take up the throw rug and wash it, and um, it works really good. So another thing that I added and it's very important in your RV that you watch out for this um, I added this uh, Accurite temperature reader and humidity reader um, because too much humidity tends to cause havoc in your unit and too low humidity as well it just it dries everything up so this keeps it um, this doesn't keep it at a, a certain um, humidity level, but it lets me know what I need to do. Right now it's 39% humidity, and ideally you want to keep it between 30 and 50% humidity. And I have my dehumidifier here on the counter, and um, it collects the water in the back, and when it gets full, it turns off just dump the water and start over now a lot of you I'm going to talk about this I don't know if I've talked about it before um, this RV comes with two AC units and these two units work in tandem with each other and what what I mean by that is when both units are running they both flow through the same vents at the same time. In other words, this unit does not just use up these vents, it flows in the bedroom vents as well. So what I've noticed that if I lower the temperature on this unit lower than the temperature on this unit, it cools down the RV a lot faster. So let's say that one is set at 77 degrees and I'll lower this one to 75 because this unit tends to cycle off the temperature on the, on the thermostat reaches um, where it needs to reach per what you set it at faster because it's a smaller room than the one in the living area. So I'll set this one at 75, 74, 73, however I need to. And this one I'll set it like at 77 and it'll cool off the RV faster that way. Okay, so that's about it. That's the anniversary tour of our 2019 Jayco Seneca 37 RB. I hope you have enjoyed our journey thus far because you've been a part of it whether you know it or not you have been a part of it 
and we're so excited that you have joined us in this journey. And second season starts after this video is done. <laughs> Okay, everybody, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe. I give a lot of tips and tricks and, and a lot of enhancements and additions and all that good stuff. So it'll make it easier for you when you finally um, buy your RV or uh, if you currently have an RV that that you know what to do okay so give me a like um, subscribe to my channel and uh, happy anniversary bye everybody <laughs>